Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Wright, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning in to my latest video. The patient in this procedure attended with a fully blocked right ear. Um, the patient suffers from otitis externa. Otitis externa is somewhat an umbrella term given to any form of inflammation or infection which affects the outer ear. So the outer ear consists of the pinna, which is a satellite dish on the outside, the external ear, and the ear canal, uh, or the auditory tube or canal, we, we call that the external auditory meatus. And otitis externa stops to the outermost layer of the eardrum. So the eardrum's got three membranes, the outermost layer, the most lateral layer closest to the entrance of the ear canal that's formed of a, the same skin that lines the inner two thirds of the ear canal. It's a very thin, delicate layer of skin measuring less than 0.1 millimeters in thickness. The middle membrane of the eardrum, it's a fibrous connective tissue um, with kind of a muscular architecture, so some radial muscles in there. Um, and the innermost layer of the eardrum is made up of the mucosa. So the mucosa is the same skin that lines uh, the back of the nose. Uh, it secretes kind of a, a, a mucus um, substance which kind of tries to keep the middle ear uh, lubricated at all times and wet and moist. So just to recap, otitis externa is an umbrella term given to an uh, infection or inflammation which can uh, affect either the external ear, so the pinna, the ear canal, and the outermost layer of the eardrum. Okay, anything, an infection that affects the cavity behind the eardrum, what we call the middle ear, is called otitis media. So otitis just means ear infection, and external, so that's the external part of the ear, media is the medial part of the ear canal, the middle portion. So I'm just using a zonal suction probe here, and I'm just, just so the patient has got a lot of dead skin and a lot of wax, so there's a combination. You can see this dead skin, it's a very thick layer of dead skin. I almost compare it to a trapdoor. When you're peeling this dead skin off the, the ear canal, it's, it, there's a lot of resistance. It just wants to fall back onto the ear canal. Think about a very, very heavy door that you're trying to open with one hand, and your other hand you've got like a, a bag uh, or suitcase, and you're trying to open up that door with one hand really putting a lot of strength behind it so you can enter the, the door with, with the, the case, the suitcase or the bag in your opposite hand. And that door's fighting against you, it's closing upon yourself. And that's what you often find with this thick layer of dead skin that lines the ear canal. So this skin acts like a double-sided sticky tape. It adheres to the ear canal wall, but it also lines and coats the, the plug of the wax. And when you're peeling it off, it just wants to snap back in position. So I've managed to get the, the lateral portion of this plug of wax and keratin out of the ear canal. A lot more medial now. Um, it's this, this piece of wax came out nice and easily and there's a lot of keratin there. And this otitis external is quite visible just at the entrance of the ear canal. You'll see it's a bit more red, uh, a bit more inflamed and there's a lot of dry skin flakes. The patient has got some treatment for the otitis external. It's a long-standing condition. Um, they've got uh, what we call um, in the UK um, otomize. So otomize uh, has three active ingredients. There's dexamethasone, so it's a steroid, it's acids that provides the anti-inflammatory effects and reduce swelling. It contains what we call an aminoglycoside, which is a form of antibiotic um, um, called neomycin. So it doesn't kill the bacteria, it just inhibits reproduction of the bacteria. Um, and the last ingredient is acetic acid. So when you have an infection of the ear, the ear should be naturally acidic in pH. So if, if we took, uh, uh, if we did a swab of someone with a natural um, a healthy ear canal, we, we took a pH swab, it should be slightly acidic around, around 6.1 um, on the pH scale. If you've got a, an outer ear infection, so otitis externa, and we do a pH swab there, typically the pH changes from a slightly acidic to a slightly alkaline solution. So the acet acetic acid within the otomize is designed to re-acidify the ear. To, um, so the acid itself can inhibit in bacterial reproduction. And got this massive tail of dead keratin here that I'm just peeling off. You can see it's quite long, it's extending probably about two or three, uh, about an inch or two out of the ear canal. So about 
yeah, up to probably four or five centimetres long. It's like a, a long, long ribbon there. I just had to dissect it and just going back in to get the residual tail that I'd snapped off. You can see there's a lot of dead keratin there. So I have advised the patient to attend more regularly. Um, so that's the patient's eardrum and you can see there's a layer of keratin there and you can see these bubbles. These bubbles have just been caused by, the patient had been using a lot of drops. So this drops had um, seeped um, beneath this dead layer of keratin. So there must be an opening somewhere and it's just created some bubbles. Um, and it's a very sticky layer. Um, so it's a very glue. So imagine um, a postage stamp and you're peeling that off an envelope and that sticky uh, underlay that's originally sticked the, the postal stamp to the envelope. Um, it's got that kind of consistency. So if you've got a sticky label on a bottle and you're peeling off that sticky label, that sticky layer underneath. So just being very gentle here. Now, patient symptoms have been alleviated, but this dead skin, I'm just, I just don't want it. I want it to migrate. I'm worried because it's stuck. It may not migrate. So I'm just trying giving it an attempt to if I can peel it. Um, I have advised the patient to use some drops and I'm going to, you'll see it in a moment, I'm going to use some drops and it actually worked really, really well. I use sodium bicarbonate drops um, for dead skin and the reason for that is um, keratin, so dead skin, um, it absorbs the sodium bicarbonate drops and which causes the skin to um, swell and rupture, so the membrane ruptures, and that kind of just doesn't dissolve dead skin, but it just breaks it up a bit, and it, uh, more so than olive oil. So olive oil, um, skin is, uh, so the keratin, the skin is somewhat hydrophobic, it repels water. So if I put oil on dead skin, it, 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 uh, it doesn't really do much uh, in comparison to something like sodium bicarbonate drops, uh, or even I would suspect hydrogen peroxide drops, so, um, these water-based drops, um, um, well, not the water itself, but the sodium inside of it gets absorbed by the skin, swells, expands, ruptures the membranes, and it just breaks it up. So I'm just going to the roof of the ear canal now, see if I can peel this layer of dead keratin off, and it's just really sticky. And I'm just being jet now, as I said, we just want to be careful. We don't want to perforate this, this uh, lady's eardrum. You can see you've got a bit of skin there. It's just about to peel off. And you can see the drops, just where I am now, there's a little bubble there. And you can see there's a bit of drops that's somehow got behind this layer of dead skin and it's just bubbling outwards. So, yeah, the patient's here is much, much better. Slight attic retraction, the, the, you can see the, so the hammer bone, you can just see it there. The biggest bubble on the eardrum, so if she's more centrally, just within that, we have what we call the umbo. The umbo is part of the hammer bone, so at the tip of the hammer bone, we have this region called the umbo and that actually it's connected to the eardrum um, inside so the, on the third membrane it's actually adhered to the to the eardrum the umbo and if you go up with the hammer bone so again just on the right hand side of the the fine end gauge we have the, 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 the what we call the the handle of manu so the handle of the hammer bone and at the top of that we have this pointed bit and we call that the short or lateral process and that's quite prominent. So think about the eardrum being like a piece of cling film. It's a very thin layer. And if you've got negative pressure in, in the middle ear, so this is the point where I've just put some sodium bicarbonate drops in. So if you've got a blocked eustachian tube, for example, you've got negative middle ear pressure, th th this eardrum, which is very thin, 0.1 millimeters, it's like cling film, it sucks in and it drapes over the top part of this hammer bone known as uh, the short process or the lateral process and it becomes very prominent and this is, it is slightly prominent there and at the, above that we have what we call the attic um, so the roof of the eardrum the past flaceda region and that's also sucked in and it's created a little pocket at the top so it's slightly retracted so patients got earwax impaction dead skin due to the otitis externa got a, a negative pressure in the middle ear due to a blocked eustachian tube so the eustachian tube is a narrow tube which connects the middle ear to so the cavity behind the eardrum which should be full of air to the back of the nose the nasopharynx it's typically closed the eustachian tube and it opens only during brief moments of um, swallowing for example a yawning and it contracts the muscles um, near the back of the nose where the eustachian tube is there, the cartilaginous portion of it. The eustachian tube opens momentarily, it either allows air to enter 
or exit, whichever is required to equalize the air pressure. So we want the air pressure behind the eardrum to be equal to the air pressure in the atmosphere. And it's the eustachian tube that does that. If you think about when you go on an aeroplane, and it's been a long, long time for many of us, and when you descend on the aeroplane, the air pressure in the plane is so, is so much greater than the air pressure behind the eardrum. It forces the eardrum to buckle inwards, it gets sucked in, and then we perform typically the valve salve. So we close the mouth, pinch your nose and blow, or we can also swallow. We force air up the back of the nose, up the nasopharynx, up the eustachian tube to pop the eardrum back out. But in this particular patient, this eustachian tube is permanently blocked at the back of the nose. So you can see the eardrum now, it's a lot more, uh, those bubbles have gone. It's a lot more transparent. There's a bit, of, still a bit of keratin there, but that will naturally now migrate. I'm pretty confident of that. Patient's hearing, um, she's hearing so much better. You can see the sodium bicarb has actually helped with some of that dry skin at the entrance, but it's not a long-term fix sodium bicarb because it's slightly alkaline in its pH, so we don't want to overuse that. Um, it's best using the optimize and long term I would actually then revert back to olive oil drops to help. Once we've got this dead layer of keratin out, if you use some olive oil earwax drops regularly, that will help moisturize, lubricate the skin and prevent dehydration um, for, for the inner layers of the skin. So I hope you enjoyed that video guys, hope you found it informative. Uh, have a great uh, weekend in the UK, it's a bank holiday weekend, so uh, yeah, please do enjoy. Take care, bye.